Hey guys, Brian back another video today. This is going to be a short one. If you haven't seen how I installed this five stage RO system in my house, I'll show you there's two videos and I'll put links off to the side. This is a very easy process whether or not you're doing the six to 12 month three stage filters or the two to three year whole system filter change. Very easy, spanner wrench, hand tight, very simple. Stick around, I'll show you how it's done. All right, so the first step is turn off the water supply. This is a quarter turn valve to the quarter inch PEX tube. Just know where your whole house shut off valve is just in case something goes wrong. That's just good practice of any project where you're touching pressurized water. You also want to turn off your tank valve. And if you have your output valve to your tap or your ice maker, this way I have a T split. I'm just going to turn these off and it'll take pressure off the system. You can open up your tap and that will take a little bit of water off, but you're going to make a little bit of mess as you take these filters off. And that's okay because we're in the basement. If you're underneath your sink, just put a rag so that you're going to get some of the spill water out of these cylinders. Even if you're really careful, you're going to still spill a little bit. So the first step we're going to do is take our spanner wrench that comes with the kit. You're going to hook it alongside and remember that you're going to go clockwise in this case. And these filters should be pretty tight. So as you turn it clockwise, it'll open up. You can pull the filter off. Like I said, you won't make too much of a mess if you're careful. Just know that this housing is full of water. And you'll see, there we go. And I conveniently have my shop sink here so I can, I can dump that right out. That's my first stage. And you can see that this sediment filter, so I believe is coconut, actually takes a brunt of the system. This will probably be the dirtiest filter in your system always because it's the first line of filtration. And I'm gonna take the second one. If you don't over tighten these, sometimes you can even get them off with your hand. Do not use metal hand tools to tighten these. Only use this plastic spanner wrench. And don't reef down on them too tight because they're pretty, pretty good O-ring seals. Again, I'm gonna make a little mess. Make sure you got a rag there. This is the second filter. This is activated carbon. So dump this out. And these will all go in the garbage. We'll take the third one off. You can see I didn't even need the spanner wrench. We'll dump this down in the sink as well. I've got three stages off. We need to get the other stage off. This one here gets directly replaced so we can actually pull these push to connect fittings. And it can be a little bit hard sometimes for people. There's tools for these, but you just gotta get your fingernails underneath the seat and it should slip right out. That guy's off. Just do one, at, one filter at a time of these so you don't mix this up. And remember that this has a directional flow and you got to remember, just remember the writing goes left to right and the flow will go that way. If you have any trouble with this kind of stuff, I highly recommend you take a picture of your setup before you take it apart. That's just good practice when you work on machinery or systems of any type. And the last filter we're going to take off is this membrane filter in the back. Just again, you got to have to take the hose off to get this cap off. This will screw off and there's a housing just like the first three stages. Unlike the fourth one, it will just get replaced internally. If you can't get this guy off by hand, there is an included spanner wrench. It's not the open type, it's the closed type, and it will engage these guys. He is pretty tight. So on this one, this is, this is the most tricky one to take off, unfortunately, but it's pretty easy. If you have a bucket nearby, I highly recommend it. This is just a basement floor, so I'm not too worried. So this guy will go in here like this. And just remember how that's seated. That's really important. If I can't quite get this guy to come out, I'm just gonna grab a pair of pliers. These are water pump pliers, they're really good. And sometimes you gotta give these guys like a little quarter turn and then they'll come out. There we go. This guy's gonna be a little dirty. You can see he's got quite a lot of sediment on it, even though it's the last stage. Now this guy's pretty dirty, this housing. So I'm actually gonna pull him off. Just remember where these connections go back in. Basically, you can't really screw this up. This fitting here, 
is your fresh water supply output. That's blue and that little cap and so is it here. So kind of a way to line it up. And the black is going to go on the white one which is the drain. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to wash all the housings out now. And if you have any doubt on how the system went back together you can always refer to your system drawing in your manual. But for now we're just going to take these housings out and the manufacturer recommends cleaning with mild dish soap and water. Nothing else. You can replace these O-rings with service replaceable parts. I'll probably replace it on the next cycle because these O-rings are still pretty good. They're not dried out. You want to make sure when you put these O-rings back in place in any case that they're actually seated in the right cavity. Otherwise you'll get a leak. That guy's clean. We're going to wash this guy too. You can see that you're going to find on the end of these filters they have quite a bit of sediment. Can see what they're holding out of your water supply and this is why you want to replace them on a regular basis now that we got our filter housings clean we can pull out the first stage and dump some of the hot water that I had in it stick it right in the tube it should seat right at the bottom where the hole is and that guy's good Second stage, same thing. Do the same on both ends so it doesn't matter. You can put it on either end. But it's got a seat in that hole. We can take our third stage. The fourth stage that comes with its own housing will come with these little plugs. You gotta push these and pull these out. This is probably just to keep dust and insects and everything else while these are in storage. But this is an easy one to go in. Alright, so now we'll put the housings back in place. I'm going to start with the first stage. If you see these connectors on the header, this assembly, this manifold, are dirty. Just make sure you clean them. Again, don't over tighten these. You can literally tighten these by hand. See this one's a little bit of sediment here. We're going to flush this whole system anyways to get all this water out and this residual. Take our second stage. Second and third are identical. You can't screw them up. Now we're going to get our fifth stage again. Make sure this end with the two O-rings comes to the end of the housing. This guy's going to seat on the front. Just like that. Should go in only one way. And the only trick here is we'll spin these around. These connections should be at the back when you go put it back in place because that's where those connections were made originally. So we're gonna snap that guy in place. Again, hand tight. Take your spanner wrench. One little, little turn. We can see it. And that one's good. And this is the only tricky part, making sure you get the connections correct again. So first thing is we'll get the input to this stage here connected. So input to that guy's back. And now we'll put this guy back in place. He's going to snap to these two brackets that are clipped into the top for the fifth stage. Put this fourth stage back in place. And this yellow go into that. Again, you don't have to remember all these connections. I just do because I know I've done this many times. But if you forget, take a picture before you do this so you're not looking for it after. This black one's going to go back to the bottom of this membrane on the bottom. And then the final connection here with the shutoff out, this is the output. Just like that. All the connections are made. Before we turn the water back on, I'm just going to clean everything off so that we can identify any leaks if there are any. With these push to connect water fittings, there's almost never leaks. 
unless you didn't get it seated correctly. That's pretty straightforward. And then just for good measure, we're going to tighten these down a little bit. Just a little bit. You don't need to over tighten these. Don't use a pipe wrench for these. Now we can turn the system back on, accumulate our tank, output, and your water supply. And you're going to hear this fill for a while, and while that's filling, we're going to run the water. I'm going to show you how the system's plumbed again. Alright, so just starting from the system input, I'm just going to show these connections again just in case you got them mixed up. My red tube is coming off my water supply. It should be coming to your first stage, first stage to your second, to your third. This third stage is coming up the back to a manifold fitting, which goes into your fourth stage. It's a clear tube. And then uh, it tees off to this accumulator tank. This accumulator tank is just to boost your pressure. That's why it's in parallel. But this yellow tube goes to the accumulator tank. And then output of this filter right here. I have a shutoff valve and it's just a white tube. The important fittings are the black, which is the drain, which is on the bottom. That one you don't want to connect to the wrong place. And the input. The other ones are color coded pretty straightforward and if you screw it up you can always go to the system diagram or the picture that you should have taken before you started. Now we'll go upstairs and we'll purge the system. It takes about two to three hours to refill the tank at full pressure. Once you do that you're going to want to open the faucet until it runs to a trickle. This will dump the first load off the tank and then you can drink the second tank once it refills later and this will flush the system. And now you're ready to drink clean water again. I highly recommend that you set up an auto purchase for these filters so that you remember to change the first three stages every six months to a year and the fourth to fifth stage every two to three years. It's really helpful. When the stuff shows up, you know it's time to change. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment below and don't forget to like this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.